What's up guys, let's talk about cores versus threads, physical cores versus logical cores, and how they play a difference in gaming and other applications that you might be interested in doing with your PC. First, thanks for tuning in, my name is Andrew and this is Elite Gaming HQ. I'm going to get straight into the information here, and I'm going to use a little analogy to explain it so that we can all have a better understanding. And if you already know this sort of thing, you can let me know if you thought the analogy was good, and if you don't know anything about something like this topic, well, I'm going to bring you up to speed in the best way I can possible. This is just something I came up with myself that I think will help everyone understand. So for this analogy, let's use uh, an i5-8400, which is an Intel 6-core processor versus a Ryzen 2600, which is a Ryzen, an AMD Ryzen 6-core 12-thread processor. Now let's imagine for a second that each core is a lumberjack, and these lumberjacks have to do work, right? They have to chop wood and the wood represents the tasks that's put in front of your computer that your cpu is going to complete and push to the side to move on to the next task well the thing is the wood is probably let's say 10 or 15 feet away from the lumberjack and then the lumberjack has helpers that's going to bring the wood to him so he can chop the wood up well, on one side we have the intel lumberjacks which have their six helpers and six wood chopping hardy lumberjacks. And on the other side, we have the AMD lumberjacks, which have six lumberjacks, but they also have 12 helpers. So as the lumberjacks on the AMD side are able to cut down the wood, they're also already ready to do the next task because they have more helpers just running pieces of wood over to them. Once again, the wood being the tasks, and the piles of wood being the tasks that are coming into the future, or stuff running in the background, so forth. So now that we got all that out of the way, it just really seems like the AMD side is going to pull ahead, right? Correct? Well, not necessarily. See, here's the difference. Intel's lumberjacks and Intel cores, for example, have better single core abilities. So it's almost like their lumberjacks are in better shape or just have better tools for the job. So they can handle the bigger task easier. See what happens is if all the tasks are just easy, each lumberjack just takes one swipe and chops down a task. Each core just completes all of its jobs. Very simple. There's many jobs that are going to take multiple swings and they're going to take your cores or your lumberjacks longer period of time to complete the task. Meanwhile, the schedulers are just waiting in the background with nothing to do except wait until it's their turn to give the task to the lumberjack when he's free again. So therefore, in this case, the Intel side can pull ahead on the bigger task. They can chop down bigger and stronger tasks at a quicker rate. So in this way, the Intel team can even the playing field. Now, how does that apply to you? But we know that both of these CPUs have six cores and have multiple helpers. One of them has stronger cores, but one of them can handle more tasks without having to think about it or having to work through it. So in any case, if you like the lumberjack analogy and if it kind of works for you and makes you understand cores better, I hope that alone makes you want to subscribe. I hope I earned your sub with that. But besides that, it really depends on what you want to do. So for most gaming applications and gaming only, it makes more sense to have stronger single core. But if you're running tons of background programs, you're also streaming, stuff like that, it's going to make more sense to have multiple threads. Now here I'm going to put a little cheat sheet that I'm going to work out. And on the cheat sheet, it's going to show a bunch of different processors. Intel AMD, it's going to show their cores their scheduler thread count, and then it's also going to show market value because that's one thing that you have to keep in mind where the market is right now. All right, so since you guys are here, I just wanted to go over the little cheat sheet a little bit. First, we'll go over Intel. Now, originally I didn't have this in the video, but I feel like it could be useful and beneficial for a lot of people who are watching this video because you're probably watching it trying to understand what processor you're going to get. And since you're looking into buying something, I'm going to try to help you make a well-informed decision. So roughly here, this is the past three years of Intel processors that are popular, and by no means is this all of them. We will not be able to cover them all by any means possible, and chances are basically a lot of the desktop CPUs that are going to come in systems that you're going to buy, either secondhand or new, are going to generally be around these here. So let's start off first with a couple i3s. We have 
the 8th gen i3 and the 7th gen. So basically anything in the 7th gen area, I don't want you to buy. The architecture is different now. 8th gen is amazing compared to 7th gen. Now, if you had something that had an i7 7700K, it's still going to be an okay buy, but you definitely don't want to buy it new. So let's go on and look at the cores and the threads here. The old i3s, 7th gen and before, would be two cores, four threads. It was basically hyper threading. The old i5s were four cores, and that was mainly the difference. They were just four cores, four threads. But now the new i3s are four cores, four threads, and they outperform all of these. So if you wasted your money on this today, it would be a very bad move when you could get this here, and this will outperform this. And quite honestly, a lot of times this will not bottleneck on most applications. So this is a really good buy for gaming alone. The other recommendation for gaming alone I would go with is probably this or one of these two. Now Intel has the K model. K basically means they don't come with a cooler, but you can overclock them if you have the right chipset, which is the B370, B390. That's for another video, but just keep that in mind. That's why they have the K. Now, honestly, the coolers they come with are garbage anyway. They're okay, but they make a lot of noise, and that's one thing I hate about them. I always remove the thermal paste and put on my own. So we have our i7s, and they're overclockable just like the i5s. Now, in the 8th gen, they moved to 6 cores, 6 threads on their i5s and above, 8th and 9th, but... The new i7s are a little bit different. See, all old i7s were four cores, eight threads. And this is still a really good processor. Not at this value, but it's a really good processor. But this, I feel like, is the sweet spot. If you're doing content creation or gaming, this, I feel like, is absurd, and this is absurd. Not absurd because they're awesome, absurd because they're stupid. See, Intel i7s always had hyper-threading, and now they're squeezing money out of people by charging more money for the 8-core, eight 8-thread, eight but not offering hyper-threading. Honestly, this should be this price. And this should be a variant of an i5 if you follow their normal price scheme, but this is just how it is. This right here is probably the king of processors that you're going to get that's not super enthusiast like this is a really good processor for youtube and that type of stuff but it's also very expensive and not i don't want to say not good for gaming but not what i recommend for gaming this is what i recommend for gaming or like i said the cheaper ones or probably this guy right here 1440p and this guy right here i just built a computer like this that had an rtx 2080, 1440p, 144 hertz he's hitting with this processor, and this thing came out beautiful. So I would save some money and go with this guy here if you're going to get anything out of this list just for gaming, okay? And the Ryzen. So Ryzen has been out for a couple years now, and anything before Ryzen I really wouldn't recommend getting unless you're trying to be on a really strict budget and you're going to use something like DDR3, all that stuff, you, uh, PCI Express 2.0, like they're just not up to par on those older FX chips because they came out in like 2011, 2013. If you buy a computer that has an FX 6300, you are throwing your money down the drain, just so you know. All those $500 computers that CyberPower is selling that has that, they're not worth it. Save your money, get a couple hundred more bucks, and buy something with a good Intel processor, 8th gen or higher, or a Ryzen processor. Do not waste your money on them. I'm just telling you now. So many people hit me up with these questions like, hey, is this a good computer for streaming? No, it's not. You're wasting your money. There's no upgrade path. It's just not good, okay? So let's get over that. Let's move into the Ryzen CPUs. And once again, this is nowhere close to all of them. And this is just a rough example of some of the more common ones. Also, if you ever want to reference these lists again, I'm going to pin them to the community section of the channel. Be sure to go there, check them out. Also vote on the would you rather that happens every Thursday because that's just fun to do. But anyway, let's get into Ryzen. Okay, very inexpensive here. We have the 1200 and the 2200G. Basically how they did this was very simplistic. First year has a one in front of it. Second year has a two in front of it. I imagine the third year will have a three. This is crazy and chaos. This is not, okay? Ryzen, basically, they're generally the same. You pay more money, you always kind of have hyper threading, and you just get more cores turned on on the same chip. Second gen allows you to use better RAM and it overclocks slightly better, whereas first gen is such a value. If you're starting a YouTube channel and you're on a budget, this by far will be the king right here, the 1700. 
You can pick this up for $160. You'll have 16 threads. It will smash video editing and it's amazing. I had this before my previous and I'm rendering 4K 60 FPS, like 48 million bit rate. And this thing is still crushing it. It's still crushing it. Knocked down my workload tremendously compared to my i7 7700K. It was just so much better. And right now it's so cheap. So we got our four core processors. Now the G means that it has onboard graphics. This is basically what you're getting in that like digital storm PC when they don't put a uh, GPU in it, you get integrated graphics. It's meh, it's okay, like it's not good. You can play Fortnite in 30 FPS maybe with it, but it's not great. Then we have basic Ryzen 5s. These I would bypass altogether. They're not worth it. Only if you wanted to not have a graphics card and save money, you go with this and then later on pop in a graphics card. That's okay. Oh, the sweet spot is here. I feel like this is it right here for the sweet spot. These two and this guy here. Um, I kind of like the second gen a little better because you can get nice dual channel RAM to go with it. And this is what I have now, but this is strictly, I would suggest for content creation. Besides Threadripper, this is kind of the best content creation. And this thing comes with an amazing cooler and that's why it's so expensive because the cooler is really good out of the box with the cooler you can get 3.9 gigahertz across eight cores which is pretty amazing i got mine hooked up to liquid with a kraken and i'm getting four i used to have it at 4.2 but sometimes it was unstable so very good overclocker with the x it uses 35 more watts than this guy here so that's strictly for content creation honestly the best value is the 1700 hands down this is a very good processor all right so as they go down the line the ryzen processors have better coolers they don't just have the same one that intel does they just give you a same generic one and it's kind of uh, they actually get better as you go in fact the 1600 has a very nice cooler the 1700 has an led cooler and the 2700x has a really nice led cooler and the other thing about ryzen is if you get a b350 b450 any of these motherboards you will be able to overclock them out of the box which is where a lot of your value comes from because single core their performance is not as good the let's go up to the 8100 is going to smash any of the ryzen 3s when it comes to game where the ryzen will start to pull ahead these two guys here price for performance in my opinion destroy this and this one will pull ahead in fps but not when it comes to content creation so that in mind ryzen is more budget option but not the latest stuff so if you have any questions what processor is going to be best for you just put it in the comments below. I'll try to answer every single one. And I think I probably mentioned that in the video, but we'll go back to the video. I just wanted to show you guys this to try to help you out. And once again, it'll be pinned in the community section of the channel. So be sure to check that out. Okay, back to the video. It's obviously not gonna make sense to buy an Intel four core processor, no matter how good the cores are, if you could get a six core 12 thread processor for the same price. And generally Intel costs a lot more. And in fact, their new range of processors, which are generally an i7 with eight cores and eight threads, and then you have to pay a premium of another $100, $130 more for eight cores multi-threads, kind of doesn't make sense. If you're looking to get into streaming on a budget, you would go with the AMD Ryzen eight core, eight threads. Or if you're looking into gaming, you wouldn't shell out the extra money for the extra threads. It just doesn't make sense because those threads will never really be utilized. Now, the other big thing to take in consideration is the more resolution you use, for example, 1440p, 4K, and maybe even so on in the future, you're gonna need less CPU. It doesn't mean you can just get away with a trash CPU but it does mean that it's gonna be less of an advantage to have such a strong CPU. So you may not wanna shell out the extra money to get something, and you absolutely don't wanna shell out the money for strictly gaming for the Intel i9. It just doesn't make any sense. Maybe I'll make a separate video on that altogether. Unless you're planning on making YouTube videos, streaming, photo editing, that type of stuff, do not waste your money on i9 9900K. It will not help you whatsoever. You'd be better off with their eight core model or even if you're playing 4k gaming you'd be better off with their six core model. and some older programs like audacity it used to only use one core so if let's for example say it maxed out that one core it would not even matter if you had a 30 core processor or a dual core processor that cost a hundredth of its price the difference is they would both render at the same exact speed when it comes to making audio. And that's a program I currently use today. So I'm familiar with how it can really bottleneck your processor, even though it's such a light program. 
Today, it's not so predominant, but it's just something to think about. Also, if you need some advice on what processor you should look for, just let me know in the comments below and I'll try to answer every single comment and to the best of my ability, trying to understand what you want to do and, you know, what is the best for your money. And all you people waiting for the Digital Storm PC review, I know a lot of people have been commenting about that. I do have the PC, it's just going to take a lot of work, so maybe this weekend or maybe a little bit after that. But I do have the Digital Storm PC here, and I'm going to test that versus other PCs. And also, if you don't know what I'm talking about, I'll put a card here for it, and I'll pin it to the first comment below. One more thing I want to mention, if you guys want to get some great deals on computer hardware, laptops, keyboard, mice, all that sort of stuff, I go through Amazon, and I add them to lists, so that you guys can see the deals right away. All you have to do is check out my Amazon influencer page, which will also be pinned to the first comment below. That's Elite Gaming HQ, or if you're typing it into the full bar, it'll be www dot amazon forward slash shop forward slash elite gaming hq and basically how this program works is i pick out deals and try to show you guys some good stuff if you guys buy from there using that link i get a two percent kickback or whatever it is and you guys also get the same price so everybody wins so i'll be constantly updating that as time goes on and putting up new stuff there for you guys to look at so thanks for watching guys and if you like this video Please hit that sub button, turn notifications on, and I'll catch you in the next one, probably this weekend. My name is Andrew, this is Elite Gaming HQ. Thanks for watching, guys.